Welcome back to Meeting in Middle America, our podcast here at the Lubar Entrepreneurship Center based at the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. I'm your host, Stephen Olikara, and I'm also founder and president of the Millennial Action Project. On the show today is a great friend of mine, a friend of the Millennial Action Project, State Representative Jonathan Brostoff. He's a member of our local chapter here in Wisconsin called the Wisconsin Future Caucus. And we're going to talk with him about an unprecedented journey that he's been on over the last year to pass a bipartisan bill that's helping the deaf community and particularly providing support for uh, sign language interpreters. He had some uncanny tactics to get it done, including not cutting his hair uh, for over a year. And I think he's just a great example of what you can achieve in public service. So I hope you enjoy the show with Representative Jonathan Brostoff. All right, we're here with State Representative Jonathan Brostoff, my good buddy. Jonathan, thanks for joining us. Good to see you, man. Appreciate it. So yeah. you are a state representative representing uh, the East Side here in Milwaukee. Yep. You've been active with the Wisconsin Future Caucus, which is affiliated with the Millennial Action Project. And we've done a lot of cool projects together here in Milwaukee, which we'll jump into. But the biggest thing I want to start with, which our viewers might have heard about, is that you went for over a year without cutting your hair. And I saw this fro continue to grow over the course of that year. Yep. So why did you do that? Well, uh, basically there's this, the kind of background is there's this legislation I've been working on with the deaf community for quite a while. And the deaf community in Wisconsin uh, really did not have a seat at the table in the same way other groups did, you know, like the WMC or the NRA or the Tavern League or other kind of big, very well-funded organizations that have large membership, ton of money, um, all sorts of ways to influence policy from that regard. So um, basically it was just me and a small, very dedicated group of volunteers within the deaf uh, and deaf alley community kind of working together, strategizing, and we had a really important time sensitive bill around um, updating the licensure for sign language interpreting and basically providing more access, more job opportunities and greater accountability for the deaf community in Wisconsin that should have passed um, this one, you know, a couple cycles ago, but uh, we got incredibly close. We got right up to the finish line. We couldn't make it over. And, and anyway, a lot of the folks who I worked with are really new to politics and um, had never even met with their state legislators before anything like that. And so I decided to take everyone out for dinner. Well, about 30 or 40 of the stakeholders, we all went out um, to kind of talk things over and strategize and just to catch up a little bit because people were very disheartened, understandably so, afterwards. And so um, kind of on the fly, I said, look, a bill this complicated that has this little support in regard to, you know, usually like big money unfortunately moves politics right. or if you have like an organized big union or lots of people and stuff like that, that's another way to do it. But a group that's kind of this small that doesn't have a lot of money to influence politics, which is not how it should be, but that's how right. it is, right. um, you know, to get this far was a big accomplishment and we defeated another really bad bill that was coming against the deaf community. I said, we've accomplished a lot, but people are so disheartened and so upset, understandably so and so. I said, look, I'm going to make a, a visual indicator to you. You're, every time you see me, you're going to see my scruffy hair. I'm not cutting my hair until we get this passed, and you're going to recognize that, that you got an ally every single day you see me. And for a politician, you know, I have like a big Jufro when it grows out, it's all curly and ridiculous looking. And that's, you know, th th that's going to be something I want to get rid of as well. I don't like having long hair. This is as long as it usually gets. Yeah. Um, it doesn't look professional. It's not something my constituents are going to appreciate, but it'll be a sign to you that I'm working on this every single day. It'll be a sign to me every single day. Look in the mirror, get this done, get this done. And um, it ended up taking a little longer than we expected because we had a kind of unique um, session schedule last, that, that cycle, but we got it done. And uh, then we had a big shearing party and we donated the money to uh, different deaf uh, organizations, but that's that's kind of long and short of it. And it really just was a kind of on the fly thing that uh, you know I said that in that community having a visual indicator for it is is a big deal as well yeah, yeah. Um, culturally. So yeah, that was that was a good experience. But um, but then one of the I think one of my Republican uh, buddies on the floor when we had a session was kind of busting my chops and then was 
you know, and a reporter overheard or something like that, and then he told another reporter, told a Milwaukee reporter, um, and then he called me up and said, hey, this is kind of funny, can I do a story about this? I said, sure. And then um, it just kind of got picked up by some different national outlets like The Hill and HuffPo and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So, But yeah, it was a great accomplishment. It really was uh, a good story of the best of what, what's possible in politics. Yeah, exactly. And there's so few of those these days. I think that's part of why it stood out as well. Most importantly, it was really good policy to pass and helps people mm -hmm. in a very direct, direct way. So. Yeah, and that's why I wanted to highlight it because there's so much divisiveness and so much negativity in politics and young people are disproportionately turning away, so disillusioned. And I feel like what this story highlights is that you really can make a difference Absolutely. and you can get, as you mentioned, new people involved in the process. Absolutely. So, how long did the whole thing take from the pledge to passing the bill? Uh, it was just around a year or so. Okay. Yeah, just around yeah. a year. And it got to, I believe my wife measured it at, I think, 11 inches, which is <laughs> much longer than I'm comfortable with. But yeah. it is what it is. But we got it done. We yeah. got it done. And uh, we actually were able to use a deaf barber who was kind of like the licensed professional that, on yeah. scene to help out and uh, highlight a deaf business in Milwaukee as well. But, you know, it's, it's the thing. There's, it, it really shows the best of politics because, yeah. again, usually the way it works is Unfortunately, there's way too many politicians who are for sale these days, who if you have enough money, you can move them one way or another. And there's way too much kind of negative influence, especially after Citizens United um, and after the kind of laws that were made in Wisconsin to basically have unlimited spending on politics um, at the state level. And therefore, the right thing becomes much harder because a small minority of people who have a ton of resources are able to have a hugely disproportionate effect on the process right. and everyone else gets um, kind of pushed out of the way and so what we see is, is policies that aren't really popular with the vast majority of people but that's how it keeps happening. This is something where a, a small in numbers and very small in that kind of political influence group who just wanted the right thing for their community and wanted a, a very important change that is fairly technical, but I can get into if you want, yeah, yeah. but, but a, a change for the better for their community and did all the research, did all the policy work and studied what other states have done and what's possible and blah, blah, went through all that and then organized and met with their legislators and you know, and I helped organize those those meetings too because they didn't have a lobbyist. They didn't have anyone running point. You know, right. we did all that work with them, and and I can't tell you how many people I had that said to me stuff like, "Oh, I never." You know, they were trying to say something nice, but they're saying, "You know, I never even thought I could talk to a politician mm -hmm. before." You know, let alone have people hear my side of the story. And it's like, you know, that's kind of a nice thing. That it's almost a compliment, but on the other hand, it's kind of sad state of affairs. We have a whole segment of population that's so, um, you know, that that's so kind of. T taken away from, the, you know, from directly beginning to influence their employees, their representatives. Right. Um, so I think we did a lot to empower a community that, uh, or help with the empowerment of a community that really, um, you know, deserves a seat at the table like everyone else, but was kind of disproportionately left off. Um, you know what they say in politics, if you're not the table, you're on the menu, that's you right. know, and that's what kept happening. So, yeah. so it was great, and now there's a lot of other initiatives that, you know, we're talking about and working on together that can help improve. This was a very important time sensitive um, thing, but it I think was not the only challenge faced by the deaf community. There's actually quite a few others, everything from, um, you know, lead K initiatives, language acquisition, especially zero to three, and then um, through early, uh, through kindergarten, early elementary school, things like, you know, captioning in movie theaters, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that Hawaii is doing. Um, there, there's a lot, but uh, this was a really important step forward and also helped show people that it can happen. Yes, that's important. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah, and you talk about the process, and it really does represent something uh, larger about how you can change politics and change the way it works. Mm -hmm. And I remember when, I, I was personally very moved by it, because I remember when you first started on it, I actually didn't know the hair was connected to the bill for the first few months, and then yeah. someone told me, and I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, because at the beginning, we had started a series called Red and Blue Dialogues, yeah. and so we would see each other regularly through that, and, uh, and when it finally passed, that was so powerful, and it was passed along a bipartisan basis. Unanimous in both yeah. houses, wow. every single Republican, every single Democrat, and actually, hmm. so funny, I'd worked so hard and so long yeah. on this, that it passed second in the, in the, in the it, we have a bicameral in Wisconsin as well, so it passed second in the Senate, and when it passed in the Senate, it was the last order of the day, and they're going through everything really quickly, and you can, if you watch on Wisconsin Eye, mm -hmm. um, you can see the, 
all the you know the, the process going through, yeah. and at the very end when it gets when it passes, uh -huh. you hear this, like scream in the background. I'm in the chambers, and I was just like I couldn't <laughs> hold it, in a, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's Brostov!" Like everyone knew, <laughs> you know, I'd been working on this, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it was and it was also just a good example of the best of what Wisconsin politics used to be. It's become much more divided, unfortunately, and really under I would say some pretty. There, there's been a lot of really corrupt and kind of evil leadership going on um, in a lot of different ways, but. This was something where Democrats and Republicans agreed, and it was something that was not, you know, it was just in service of, of people. And, you know, folks who are on the kind of extreme conservative side of things, I would say in general, um, hopped on board. And you had people like Thiesfeld as well, Cleefish, um, who took a lot of leadership on it when he was representative, and then afterwards, um, you had people like, uh, you know, Tittle, who were really on board. So you had a lot of really, and, and a new senator, um, uh, from uh, from central Wisconsin, Teston, who were really helpful in this, but it was a completely bipartisan thing, and and it's also really rare that something this substantive passes unanimously in both houses. Usually, that's you know like um, declaring it you know Badger Month or some right. sports team right. or something like that. It's, it's it's very rare you get unanimous support on something like this, but it was just awesome. Yeah, and, for a substantive bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fantastic. Is, is there a, a story from? you convincing that first Republican to get on board? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I Well, you know, initially, there, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, but yeah. there was a lot. This is a group that did not have a big presence in Madison. Right, right. It wasn't, it's not like the Harley Riders or all these other organizations. Right. And so I would, there was not really necessarily like hostility, but there was, I would say, a lot of, um, kind of passive ignorance towards the community and towards their needs. And it took a lot of educating at first because people just didn't, it wasn't that they were, again, I'm not saying that this was something where either Democrats or Republicans or anyone else was like evil in this way or anything like that or hostile, it was just there wasn't the knowledge of the issues at hand right. because they hadn't, and, and, and a lot of it came from proximity. You know, I think we had the first deaf intern in Madison, you know, Tamara, and, her just interacting with people in the hallways and stuff like that was really helpful in kind of educating some of our colleagues about some of the challenges they might face if they're in a different situation. Um, and then uh, we had a couple deaf legislative days. And yeah, I remember very clearly one of my colleagues who was very hesitant at this in the beginning, who was actually Republican, who said, you know, basically there's no way they would support this and, you know, that they didn't see a need for it and it's just a waste of time, right. kind of after a couple of years of educating work on this was one of the staunchest supporters wow. um, and I, I believe became a co-sponsor if memory serves so yeah you you definitely can see that growth but a lot of it is is proximity to power yeah. and just being able to let people know exactly what the issue is and educate them it wasn't necessarily that there was an evil or hostile perspective it was just a kind of lack of awareness lack of awareness yeah. exactly yeah yeah well I think that story just highlights that politics has, at its best, you can really move people. 100%. And, 100%. Uh, and you can speak to their better angels. Yeah, and, and I will say this too. Um, someone who I've fought tooth and nail with and who yeah. in some ways I think, you know, I have very different perspective on, but in this case really came through in the clutch was actually, you know, one of my greatest opponents is Robin Voss, yeah, who is, yeah. uh, you know, the top Republican on the mm -hmm. assembly side. Um, as he's the speaker, right. but to his credit on this, he was really great and wow. you know being able to kind of compartmentalize I'm sure he's got his feelings about me or whatever, whatever <laughs> I'm sure but on this he was absolutely fantastic and he I mean there was a lot of Republicans and Democrats who did a lot of heavy lifting mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't want to diminish Senator Teston's role as well. He was pretty pretty great as well and, and Skaronsky mm -hmm. and his staffer Sarah, but but at the end of the day um, this was something where people who are could not be more opposite side of things yeah. came together on. Maybe he just wanted you to get a haircut too. <laughs> I'm sure that was a part of it. I'm sure. It was a, but even before yeah. that, even yeah. the first time around, he was very supportive. Yeah, he was yeah. very supportive from the from the very beginning. Actually, um, it got caught up in the Senate. It wasn't. It was the Senate's fault, not the Assembly. Didn't pass right. the first time. Right. Excellent. Well, we could talk about this so much, but really appreciate you sharing a little bit about the story of how it came from the conception of the idea to ultimately winning. And for everyone who's tuning in, you have a great speech on the floor of the yeah. assembly uh, done in sign language. It was actually the first, yeah. uh, first time it's ever been done in state history, so it's kind of yeah. cool. I didn't realize that, but the archivist 
contact my office afterwards. Yeah. So like, hey, wow. just so you know. So that's extraordinary. Yeah, maybe we can link that in the show notes. We will. Awesome. Absolutely. Hey, Jonathan, thank you so much. Yeah, really appreciate you. it. Fantastic. Thank you.